Welcome to our virtual school indoor air quality walkthrough program. I'm Dave Blake of the Northwest Clean Air Agency in Mount Vernon, Washington. In the next hour, we're going to talk about the key elements of a school walkthrough. First, I'll begin with a brief overview of some walkthrough basics, why we do them, where walkthroughs fit in the grand scheme of a school's formal indoor air quality program, and some basic points to remember when organizing and preparing to embark on your first one. Next, you'll see a presentation by my colleague Rich Prill, a building scientist with the Washington State University Extension Energy Program. Rich will cover two key areas any walkthrough team needs to understand before getting started. The use of carbon dioxide diagnostics to determine adequacy of fresh outdoor air ventilation and the critical importance of airflow direction throughout the school. Rich will then lead us through the walkthrough of our virtual school, which is actually the distillation of hundreds of photos from the 500 schools and 40,000 classrooms he's observed in the past 10 or so years. He'll share vivid examples of many things that can go right or wrong impacting air quality in schools and in the process, hopefully take some of the mystery out of exactly what we mean when we refer to school indoor air quality. Finally, I'll cover post walkthrough activities and wrap things up. So let's get started. The Environmental Protection Agency's Indoor Air Quality Tools for Schools program has outlined a six element framework for effective school IAQ programs. You'll see that the walkthrough evaluation is a key component to be accomplished early on in the process of building and adopting your school IAQ program. Ultimately, walkthroughs involve the on-site communication, observations, and measurements necessary to plan improvements for IAQ and result in healthier air for staff and students. That's the idea. School conditions can change, so you can see that monitoring is your early warning system, giving you a fighting chance to find small problems and fix them before they grow into big problems. A school walkthrough assessment is like going in for your annual physical exam. It's all about prevention. If you don't look, you don't know. If we suspect a situation or problem that is beyond our skills or the scope of a walkthrough, we can always recommend a specialist for a closer look, just like your doctor would do. The walkthrough provides an opportunity to communicate any concerns, just like you would share with your doctor. An exam on your body takes measurements to create a baseline picture of your health today, just like the walkthrough documents conditions in the school that can be evaluated and controlled or fixed if necessary. We provide immediate feedback at the end of a walkthrough as all the data collected is posted in the staff room, along with our contact information for any questions that arise. Most often this feedback provides peace of mind, just like that report of lowered cholesterol levels in your blood. Try to get administrative buy-in for addressing any IAQ issues found during a school walkthrough. Patience is very important. Administrators are usually very busy and may be distracted and miss the importance of issues raised. They, like most people we initially encounter, are not indoor air quality experts. We're all learning about this stuff at the same time. So a little patience will be remembered when the next, perhaps bigger, IAQ issue brings the administrator back to you looking for some guidance and support. Don't burn any bridges if you meet resistance. If you don't initially get administrative buy-in, sell. But sell gently. Here are your talking points. Walkthroughs are non-regulatory. We have no rules to enforce, and the tone should be non-threatening. Walkthroughs send a positive message to staff and parents. We didn't force our way into the school. You invited us. Please come, take a look at our school, and tell us what we can do better. Walkthroughs provide a practical learning opportunity for staff and other team members. It's a great opportunity for one-on-one -on -one skills training. At the end of the day, we often have to pry a new team member's hands off the equipment. Walkthroughs are interesting and can be serious fun. Our overall goal is to increase awareness of indoor air quality and encourage development of a formal indoor air quality program. When we're done with a walkthrough, school staff have a better understanding of what we mean by indoor air quality in the first place. They understand their own buildings better, and they have improved the personal confidence and skill level that will help ensure the sustainability of the indoor air program. For a typical 20-classroom school, our walkthroughs generally take about half a day. A high school may take all day. It's a great opportunity to establish your credibility. Show what you know. Show that you care. Show that you know how to listen. For your primary inspection team, it's good to have the facilities director or other person with keys and a thorough knowledge of the school. Typically, the head custodian or principal will come along, at least for a few classrooms, to see the routine and get a feel for what we look for room by room. Other key people on the team might be a school nurse, HVAC specialist, safety or union reps. 
perhaps even representatives from other districts or your local health department that might benefit from the training. If the team gets a little unwieldy in size, remember that everyone doesn't have to enter each classroom to minimize disruption during the five or ten minutes inside. Before starting for the day, have a brief sit down with the team to make sure everyone is on the same page. Agree that any sampling results or values will be posted right away in the staff room with business cards of people who can answer any questions that come to mind. Agree that the walkthrough is the first step toward creating a more formal indoor air quality program for the school. And agree that whatever is observed during the course of the day, corrective action will be prioritized with appropriate timelines. We want to see schools during normal occupied hours at full capacity engaged in customary activities. We need the occupant's breath to do our carbon dioxide diagnostics of fresh air ventilation. We want staff to be warned well in advance that we're coming and that our walkthrough is routine, not in response to a crisis. That way, we don't have to explain ourselves room by room. It's best for a local team member, a face the kids recognize, to enter the classroom first so we aren't just barging in with all our scary equipment hanging off us, freaking out the little kids. Are you the Ghostbusters? Should we hold our breath? Our typical answer to this question is, we're trying to make sure you get plenty of fresh air in here, or your teacher wants to make sure you get plenty of fresh air in here, as opposed to your mom's attorney wants to be sure you get plenty of fresh air in here. Teachers will sometimes ask us to stop for a moment and explain what we're doing to the students and take some questions. When the walkthrough's over and done, the baseline data collected will be used to shape the content and priorities of a practical and effective indoor air quality program for the school as a whole. Now for a step-by-step -step guide to an indoor air quality walkthrough in our virtual school, here's a presentation by building scientist Rich Prill.